Well, thank you for that introduction. Um, it's an honour and a joy to be here this weekend. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me, Tony. Um, I'm going to be reading today mostly from my collection, The Lightbox, which came out last year from a small press in Kent with a wonderful name of Cultured Lama. Um, and as you might expect from a book with that title, The Lightbox, light is one of its central themes. Um, and I'm going to... Uh, the cover, by the way, is by Stanley Spencer, and I'm going to, in the second set, I will be focusing on poems about and inspired by Stanley Spencer. Um, but first, I'm going to uh, think about the theme of light. Um, there was a wonderful review of this in Helen's um, Ink, Sweat and Tears, where Graham Birchall said that in, the poem, in, a, in a book with 69 poems, 35 have the word light in them, also 35 have the word love, and there's lots of kissing in between. <laughs> so we'll come on to kissing in a moment. But first of all, I wanted to um, write about photography, because obviously that immortalizes experience through using light. And um, you may know that the first ever photographic negative, the first photographic negative was created in Wiltshire uh, by Fox Tolbert in 1835 and he took a photo of a small window of his home at Laycock Abbey. But the first photo to include human beings was made by Daguerre in Paris in 1839. He took a photo of a busy street, which I've put copies of against the mirrors, the black and white copies there. Um, and uh, he took a busy city street in Paris, but because of the necessary length of exposure, all the moving figures disappeared, the coaches and horses and people. Um, there's just two figures right at the front, if you look closer later, but there's two figures right at the front here in the photo who were still long enough for the, um, to be registered on the photo. So this is a little sonnet about that story. The first men of light. I've seized the light. I've arrested its flight. De Guerre in Paris, 1839. Gis Boulevard du Temple, its tall white houses rising like spectres, soft skyline of a ghostly city. The exposure of his photo so long it can define only motionless things on the silver plated copper. Traffic, horses, and crowd that afternoon fled into the ether. But two small figures persist, one a proud Parisian, standing as the other kneels in front of him, a boot black, head bowed, the first ghost to be caught on camera, condemned to be in service forever. So here's a, here's a, here's a kiss poem. Um, I wrote this um, when I was at Gatwick Airport. I'd been waiting for a friend to arrive from the States, and the flight was delayed, so I had plenty of time to sit and people watch in the arrivals lounge. And there was one couple who had a particularly passionate greeting. Airport kiss. These are mouths that have been waiting for months to meet on the same continent. And they kiss without shame, drawing us all in as we watch over our stale Starbucks. Sharing that taste of coffee, tart and bitter on the lover's tongue, and smelling minty toothpaste from that hurried cleaning 3,000 feet above, that in-flight dab of aftershave. Wondering how long it can last, this one-breath kiss between two men, one slender, suited, black, neatly professional, the other with bare arms toned to stone and buttocks tight in frayed denims, while the rest of us shuffle to greet our own tame passengers, British enough to know how to pretend to look away while keeping one envious eye fixed on love's exuberance. <coughs> 
I'm interested in how our bodies hold our experience and our history, how our history is written on our bodies in various scars and marks. And this poem is about that. It's called The Lover's Exchange. He traces the scar on her knee, indigo still from the playground's coal dust and gravel. She wonders at the small V over his heart, a girlfriend's angry scissors. The marks on her wrist he passes over silently, touches the hollow of a lost child, lets her caress the scorch on the back of his hand from when he was eight, an English boy living in Germany, and the man in the barber's shop stubbed his cigarette in the young white flesh said, that's for Dresden. She puts her lips to that place where the fires burn all these years on, as if her mouth, her one breath, were enough to blow out the candles of war, return to their bodies newborn skin on which nothing is written. The title of that poem, The Lover's Exchange, was partly borrowed from John Donne, his Love's Exchange, and the next poem is about John Donne. Um, I took the title of this, John Donne Arriving in Heaven, from um, a painting by Stanley Spencer, one of his early paintings. Um, The poem bears no relation to the painting except the title. Um, But as you probably know, titles are not copyright, so I was able to take that. Um, And uh, I wrote this in India when I was on spiritual retreat and it includes some of my own ideas about what might happen when we die um, with some of John Donne's ideas and you may recognise some of his own phrases in this. John Donne arriving in heaven. He knew it would be a melting. Looking back at the world as a place of icicles and clouds. Lilies of passion unmooring their tangled roots. Knew that with the rungs of prayer and reason knocked away, the subtle knot undone, he would step into this delicate permanence, the light cleansing, as protracted evening sun perfects a field of harvest corn. Expected such radiance that finds no flaws in all that's happened, no severity, only the mercy of a paradise always autumn, its joy possessed, ripe, perfect, complete. But this is less the arrival he foresaw than an undoing of distances, a shedding of himself to become who he already was, not gaining union, but losing the illusion he was separate, was ever other than this one, the hand that set all things in motion, spread this equal light, made on a whim the stars, the schoolboys, the unruly sun. All love a dream of this, And now, as he takes on the bliss, the infinite bliss his little deaths on earth struggled to reach, he finds his words at last translated to their proper tongue.